I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 19th and the 26th of January 2019. This is where I talk about celestial transits, movement in the sky that affect us all, and how to better cope with them in the week ahead. I don't know if some of you remember, but about two weeks ago I've shared with you this new application called Daily Horoscope. It's a wonderful application. I've warned some of you that it just started and they're still putting things up there and they're still renovating. Some of you have downloaded it and were a bit disappointed that there's not a lot of videos there and such. But look at it now. They've updated and there's everybody is in there. It's becoming like a hub. You can find my videos there, of course, but you can find Kaipacha and Astrology Answers and Astroloda. Uh, basically everybody. It's, it's a wonderful place to, to look for astrology videos and content condensed. So you have uh, underneath these videos the links to download it for free, both for Apple or Android, and it's an application that I do recommend. So we are heading into more turbulent water. We're heading into a shifting time, into a time that the shifts could become more sudden and more abrupt, and the pace is quickening over the next few weeks. And of course, in a few days, we'll be hitting that super moon, super blood moon lunar eclipse happening at zero degrees Leo on the Leo Aquarius axis. It's going to be the last eclipse in the Leo Aquarius axis that have begun about um, a year, two years ago, 2016. And this is going to be it for the next eight or nine years for eclipses and that sign this is a big eclipse and this is first of all a beautiful sight you are in the americas go out and watch the spectacular lunar display the blood moon sounds so ominous but i've heard a beautiful podcast by the great stephen forrest an evolutionary astrologer as well that spoke about the reason that the the moon turns red explaining that if you would be sitting on the moon at the time of the eclipse, what you would see is Earth as a black disk with the sun around it, creating a ring of fire, a beautiful ring of fire. And all the light from all the sunrises and all the sunsets around Earth at that time would be concentrated on the moon, painting it red. Suddenly it doesn't sound so ominous anymore. It sounds beautiful. It sounds magnificent. It sounds too good to be true. So if you are in the Americas and there's nothing too particular on MTV, the 9 o'clock news, Nickelodeon, or whatever, disconnect from the disconnection and connect. Well, you know, as Greta Mutwell, the chief of chiefs of Africa, said, mankind in the 21st century have to reconnect to the earth and reconnect to the stars. So reconnect to that personal experience. What is Leo all about? Reconnect to the kindling of that inner flame. Um, and of course, the disconnection and seeing it through the media is all what is what, what Aquarius is about. Excuse me. But if you do have a chance, go out, watch this beautiful sight. Let that change you. That's what lunar eclipses are all about, times of great inner change. The moon is this emotional sponge that makes us who we are, that composes our emotional framework, that m m makes certain things provide comfort and a feeling of safety and familiarity and others not. And when there's a lunar eclipse, it's a time that these filters can change and shift. And evolve and whether you'll be feeling this eclipse very strongly or not depends on your personal natal chart and if you have any planets on that Leo Aquarius axis in the beginning of Leo Aquarius axis or squaring it on the Taurus uh, Scorpio axis so a time of a total lunar eclipse is an emotional sponge that is being changed. A veil that can be lifted. 
an authenticity that is suddenly recognized, a hunger that is sparked for that authenticity to be rekindled in your life, the importance of it re-emerging after it has been forgotten or maybe never really known before. So if you are feeling like there's something brewing inside, if you are feeling like you're unsettled, if you're, un if you're feeling like there's some kind of inner tension that something can pop any moment, you're probably feeling the effects of this eclipse plus something else. At the time of this eclipse, Saturn, the old judge, sitting on its throne in Capricorn, is going to square exactly Mars, the young uh, hero, or the young warrior, in its house in Aries. Both very strong forces that are confronting each other making us many times in our life face facts we're uncomfortable with in order to mature. This is a classic challenge aspect. Mars, the young uh, entrepreneur, wanting to do something with himself, with this world, to go and march forward to realize myself hitting that square from old Saturn and Capricorn saying, oh boy, you hold that horses, but until you're uh, um, road safe, you're not getting on that highway. You have to show me your permit <laughs> and your license before I let you go on that road. We're running a system here. There's laws and regulations. And they don't, they don't bend for anyone. So many times we could be feeling that we need to wait more time or something or somebody is making us stop and mature some more. Make our project more in line with reality or our initiative more in line with reality before we can actually take it ahead. So that's one thing that is happening. Other things that are happening is a square from the sun to Uranus making us all intolerant, wanting to move faster forward. We don't have patience to wait for the changes to happen. There's a lot of Aquarian energy in the sky making us all rebellious, more than necessary. And on the other hand, we have this beautiful conjunction by Venus and Jupiter walking together in Sagittarius in the sky. There's actually a song about it in Hebrew that is called When Venus and Jupiter Go Hand in Hand in the Heavens. Um, that was a hit back in the 70s. <laughs> um, no, I'm not going to sing it to you. Come on. Um, anyway, so there's not a lot of tolerance. There's not a lot of patience around. There's a lot of rebellious energy. And, and uh, that uh, Uranus is squaring that lunar eclipse as well, just to top it all off. But um, we could either choose to connect to that very beautiful Venusian, Jupiterian energy, making us understand that there's a lot of beauty, that there's a lot of comfort, that there's a lot of harmony, that there's a lot of money to be made, <laughs> that there's a lot of value to be gained as well or to be recognized in this life for us providing a lot of comfort and satisfaction and enjoyment and love and if we're not careful we could be spending a lot of money or eating a lot of food <laughs> or just becoming um, too indulgent to fill up the gap and the void created by the hard facts of life. So watch out for that. On an, so let's and and let's see if there's anything else. Right, Mercury has to square that Uranus as well, making us all again uh, maybe have epiphanies, maybe think outside the box, maybe really 
choose solutions that we've had never seen before for old problems and actually walk forward but this is a challenging aspect it is, it is a square and most often than not it could make arguments or um, people changing their minds and, and, and changing their agreements and we have to watch out um, not to act out with our words and our actions at that time and be more forgiven for forgiving for other people who do but keep them in line of course um, and as I said the pace is heightening Mars is going to try in Jupiter late next week uh, or, or later this week I'm sorry and this is really a time that things are starting to happen fast there's a lot of energy coming in so if you want to reach for your dreams you have to do it this is what this year is about this is what the Jupiter Neptune square is about I mean don't disconnect from reality to in total but take those energies harness them positively believe that change is possible and go forward in your life this is the time to do it utilize these very unstable uh, shifting times to actually provide an upgrade so let's see how this all works out in the weekdays Saturday is a sensitive day um, a better day to be with people you love and who comfort you and be the same towards others and Sunday the 20th be careful of being too emotional and lacking um, lacking um, um, a sense of security of inner security of self um, a feeling of, of self-sustainability don't be too much of a hard judge regarding yourselves or others on that day this is a wonderful day to do things that are out of the ordinary and have some artistic or, or spiritual streak to them or it's a wonderful day for inspiration and music it's not such a good day for communication it's not such a good day for a left brain kind of activity or to deal with a lot of shit and of course we are already heading into this full blood moon eclipse lunar eclipse um, in zero degrees Leo that I've talked about before and it's going to be either on the 20th if you are in the States or on the 21st if you are in Europe um, so it's going to eat hit uh, Central European time at around 7 a.m. on the 21st and the 21st and the 20th are really packed days in the skies there's so much happening all around the square to Uranus the Mars squaring Saturn the eclipse Venus squaring Neptune making our love life seem um, sometimes disconnected from reality sometimes we could be feeling as if our hurt feelings are, are touched but it's a also mo a wonderful time to reintroduce a healthy kind of romance into that relationship and have more belief in the ability of that relationship to actually provide something that is better than the real that is better than the daily um, faded coloring that is more technicolor and it's wonderful for inspiration as well and anything artistic um, Tuesday the 22nd is just a wonderful day all around we have the moon in Leo I just love how this day looks it doesn't mean that it has to be wonderful for you I mean you have to check your own natal chart to see how this works with your own aspects in your own chart but generally in the sky there's trines all around trines all around and trines all around and Venus is conjunct Jupiter exactly the moon is trining Mars, the moon is trining Venus, the moon is trining 
that Jupiter. It's a day with a lot of expansive energy. It's a day that could be really wonderful for taking things forward, for uh, doing that extra mile, for topping things up, for if you need if you need energy, if you need bravery, if you need inspiration, plan on Tuesday to provide it for you. Take it to the next level, but of course keep it sustainable and keep it real. It's a wonderful time for relationships as well. It's a wonderful time for love. It's a wonderful time for physical activity, if you get what I mean. And basically just try to enjoy yourself. Just don't overindulge because that's one of the predicaments of that constellation in the sky. So not too much of a sweet tooth, right? Um, Wednesday the 23rd, bit more of a frustrating energy as uh, we could feel a bit like a mercury retrograde as things are not working out communication wise things can malfunction plans can change take it easy take it easy don't be too hard on yourself or others don't be too critical on that day 24th watch out for criticism as well intolerance great day for actually taking career oriented job oriented matters responsible matters ahead um, it's a time that the paste is again heightening with mercury is going into Aquarius as well it's a really fast moving paste and and all our mental sphere communication and movement forward is becoming erratic and and very much faster than it was before it's hard to keep up sometimes the information flow could be greater the the intake can feel um as if we're not really processing it at all it's just being stored somewhere and we're moving forward much faster and there could be sudden movements from one one stance to the next that could be a little unsettling but as i say with uranian times don't look for stability look for an upgrade um, so this is really a time for an upgrade for you, for me, for all of us. This is a time to take things forward. And the 25th, the Friday 25th, is a sensitive day, but it's also a day of the exact trine between Mars and Jupiter. So much energy in the sky. Harness it. Do things with it. Go out. Go out to nature. Go out to the world. Go out and conquer your dreams. Yes, it is frightening. Do it anyway. Make sure that you are real enough, that you fasten it to reality. But do go through the motions. Even if it's hard to believe it just yet, do go through the motions. And there's a trine by the moon to Mercury and the sun to the moon. Just a good day that Friday. The moon is in Libra. I like it. I like it. The only thing I don't like is that opposition to Chiron making things more sensitive and sometimes hurtful at that morning of the 25th, Friday morning. Saturday the 26th, watch out for aggression. Watch out for uh, being too judgmental or judging others too harshly or talking from your own insecurities. Uh, that is a day to take artistic projects or just go out to nature. Um, it is a day for anything spiritual or philosophic. Um, and very good afternoon and evening to be with others also intimately. Just watch out not to be too dramatic, obsessive, or um, um, manipulative. There is a square from the moon to Pluto that evening it's good more for intricate intimate or or um, psychological um, discoveries and not so for confrontation confrontation can become overly dramatic on that day and we do have an opposition to Mars as well so confrontation wise do watch out that Saturday the 26th that's about everything I had to say I want to thank you for watching may we all live long and prosper. Bye-bye.